One thing that Eddie Trunk said to me before was that he felt once grunge became huge and, you know, sort of pushed glam metal to the side, that it left a permanent stain on glam metal, so to speak. Eddie feels that even to this day, the grunge backlash against glam still unfairly paints glam in a negative light. Do you agree at all? To a degree, among critics, yes, but among fans, no. I mean, how could we have played in front of so many people for so many years? I mean, if it really was a backlash, you wouldn't have all these festivals built on the backs of of these kinds of bands, would you? You wouldn't. And yet, the music resonates so well and so incredibly well and matters so much to so many people. 80s was derided by critics, you know. We were as vacuous and stupid. And yet, they played, 80s bands probably played to more human beings than anybody else previously in the history of the world. And those fans had kids and they managed to keep the popularity up. So it was redemptive to see us and all these other bands play these gigantic festivals in Europe and South America. Now, in America, it's a different story in America. In America, no one gives a shit about this stuff. They really don't. But in South America, in Europe, in the Far East, in India, were revered. So that means that we meant something to them that was much more important than we meant to the American average American kid. And I am extraordinarily grateful because it gave us a life. We left it. We didn't have to leave it. You know, when we started in 2003, I said to D, how long do you think this shit's going to last? Like two years? By 2006, I go, how long do you think it's going to go? Another two years? And then by 2010 is, how much longer can these festivals go on? I'm sure 2012, it'll be over. And the offers got bigger and the crowds got bigger. In 2016, during our last run of dates, we probably averaged 60,000 people a night up to 110,000 people twice. I, you know, it was mind blowing how big it, it, it was. Mind blowing. You could, we could have kept it going too. It didn't matter. We weren't playing a lot, right? You play 20 shows a year. You're not exactly burning yourself out. Okay. But the amount of kids who love it. I don't know if Eddie Trunk has been to South America and seen how the South American kids are. They revere this music, you know, and as great as it was in Brazil, in Argentina, in, in Buenos Aires, the single, the single greatest rock audience you will ever witness in your life. If you do nothing else, go to Buenos Aires the next time a heavy metal band comes down there and plays and watch those kids. Mexico, not far behind. Mexico's got 60 Beatle cover bands. Do you know that? 60 Beatle cover bands. Do you know our number one country in Spotify is Mexico? Twisted Sister? Yeah. Yeah, number one country, Spotify. So it resonated. I think America has a strange prism of how to view it, like a really weird prism of view. We have a whole different view of it in South America and Europe. And I'm grateful to them. And, and those fans, you should ask them. Do you think that glam bands sometimes get brushed off because of their look? Absolutely. Yeah. There's an unfair backlash against Twisted Sister because of how we looked. You know, now, now we knew that that would be alienating. You know, when we finally took our makeup off, it finally allowed people to like us for just being a good rock band and not, you know, we didn't lose any of our fans and we gained people. Our fans knew who we were, but people who didn't know us would come and see the band, not see makeup and go, oh, cool. You know, they're just a heavy metal band. Um, but the way we look definitely turned people off. What Here's what amazes me, that Motley Crue turned out to be as popular as they are. You know, I understood Kiss 100%. You know, I, I understood Kiss's popularity without a doubt. Motley's, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it because I don't – they never – we're good, <laughs> you know, like Guns N' Roses. That was a great band, you know. Kiss was a great band. Molly's never been a great band. And yet they had, when they returned, when they sold out all those stadiums, I was like, wow, okay. They mean a lot more to people than I ever expected. I never expected them to do that. So they, they had a deeply affecting image and style and music to people. I don't get it. I really don't get it at all. Whereas I get 100% Kiss. I get 100% Guns N' Roses. I don't get Motley's incredible popularity. But more power to them. You know, just because I don't get it doesn't mean anything. It's just I, it's just that uh, so um, it's hard. It's, it's really hard to say. You know, I mean, the public ultimately determines your, your, your um, I thought Twisted had no following. When Twisted came back, 
after 9-11. And we wound up headlining for, for 14 years in Europe. And we played 100,000 people all the time. If you were to say to me, oh, you're going to come back and you're going to be playing 100,000 people. And you're not going to take it. I Want to Rock are going to be the most popular heavy metal songs in history for licensing. You know that the number one and number two song, the most licensed songs in the history of heavy metal, are not controlled by ACDC, KISS, Guns N' Roses. It's controlled by Twisted Sister. We're not going to take it. I want to rock the most licensed songs in history, heavy metal songs in history. Who knew that was going to be? And if you would ask me that 20 years ago, I'd say, what's a license? I don't even know. So it's interesting to see what time does. And by the way, to all the people that hate us, well, too bad. We're not going to take it as everywhere. It's in commercials and TV shows. It's in. It's in movie soundtracks. It's everywhere because it resonates. And obviously, if you last long enough, do you know what that means, Daniel? It means you resonated. It means you re it means you meant something to people. So obviously, Motley means a lot to people, and Poison means a lot to people. And, but yeah, do we get all the derision? Yeah, of course we do. You know, it's built into the cake because our music is designed. The image of youth and prettiness. Is not in a bunch of guys who are 60 years old with pot bellies. Okay? Whereas Crosby, Stills, and Nash look the same. You know? I mean, it just, it doesn't, Santana doesn't need to look like he did when he was 22. Clapton doesn't need to look like he does when he was 22. Unfortunately, for bands like us that were so visualized, forever have that kind of goofy rock persona, which David Lee Roth. By the way, exemplified in Van Halen, but they were saved by Sammy Hagar, okay? A much more serious musician. So Eddie didn't have to just sit behind the goofy doofiness of David Lee Roth. He was redemptive with... with uh, I, look, I can just go on forever with these kinds of theories, but, but that's how I view. And you're one of the few people that kind of sees these larger pictures. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more because there is a lot more to come. All the videos on my channel are original. I'm the one filming, editing, and conducting all the interviews. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Thanks for watching.